So it's been a few weeks now since GPT-5 launched. And you know, if you've been online, there's obviously been a lot of mixed reviews um, about generally how good this model is. Is this really a step forward and so on and so forth. And I think a reason why that there is such discourse around it is partially related to the rollout and like lack of access to it, but also because it actually is a pretty different model in terms of how you interact with it compared to 4.0 or even the reasoning models. And, you know, we spent a lot of time messing around and testing these things and put together what we think is a good guideline for how to actually get better outputs from GPT-5 um, from like a prompt engineering perspective. Um, so it's really focused around more so people using the model through the API, but it will be relevant if you're just prompting it in ChatGPT too. So. Let's kick things off. So clearly, you know, agents, people believe to be the future. Um, and so all the model providers are really trying to handle these types of tasks. So long running things along those lines, the GPT-5 is really good at things like that. So tool use actually leveraging its long context window, long running tasks. It is very good at that. Um, check out our recent video on long context windows because it is the current state of the art on fiction bench, um, which is a benchmark for testing models comprehension um, in long context windows and not just retrieval. So it is very good like that. Um, and something that it's interesting about the model is that it's very steerable in the same way that 4.1 is. Um, and so it will closely follow your instructions. Like you, it will do what you tell it to do. Um, and through its reasoning, so a big difference between 5 and 4.1 is that through its reasoning, it can make high level decisions when the instructions aren't clear. Um, but generally speaking, it will follow your instructions, which is kind of a double-edged sword. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, but to be able to kind of control its eagerness, um, you have a couple of different things you can pull on because the model really was designed to be very kind of wordy and, and proactive and do a lot. So you really kind of need to keep this in mind when you want to dial it back. So reasoning effort um, is one of the main ways to do that. So it can be high, medium, low, and now minimal. Um, or the parameter values. And so for most tasks, you know, generally I feel like low is probably either a good place to start or a good place where you will end. Um, but what's interesting is that you can also influence the speed directly in your prompt. Um, you can argue that the prompt will actually override some of these API parameter values. So example from OpenAI, um, get context fast, paralyze discovery and stop as soon as you can and act. It gives stopping criteria. It gives how to loop. Um, and so this is basically taking what is an API parameter and turning it into instructions. And we saw something similar to this when we were looking at the Cloud Four system prompt. Um, it's, you know, it's stated queries and research should have two to 20 tool calls. Um, complex queries should have at least five. And so it's giving in the prompt um, some more concrete guidance on, on how to limit or um, increase its eagerness. Another example of specifically around the context gathering um, cause that's where I think GPT-5 was really trained most to be proactive and do a lot of research by default. Um, you know, keep the search minimal, blah, blah, blah. And so on the flip side, if you want them to think more deeply or call more tools, you can, you know, set the reasoning effort to high generally. Um, this will really allow it to go plan and consider and do a lot of things. So it'll be much slower and cost you more money. Um, but good for like really reasoning intensive tasks. Um, and as we saw before, you can use the prompt instructions to like reinforce the behavior, which again, I think is really interesting. Um, so things like telling it's an agent, keep going till the user's query is completely resolved, only terminate when you're done, never stop. Don't ask for the human to confirm or clarify assumptions. So you can really instruct it to kind of continue to go and do more. It'd be interesting to test with the API parameter versus just the instructions and see how that varies on performance. And Something that I think is important that they don't really do here is still giving the model like a, a stop, you know, an exit hatch, a stop condition, um, because this is like pretty, pretty bold instructions. Um, and if you tell it to never stop, unless it does a certain thing and it's not able to accomplish that thing, it might just never, ever stop. Um, and so that could cause that like, performance issues, so on and so forth. Something important is that reasoning effort affects uh, not how much, just like the reasoning text, which of course it affects that, but also how readily it will call tools. Um, and so that's something very important to keep in mind. Something they note, um, OpenAI notes in their cookbook, but now we see kind of everywhere um, is that generally breaking big jobs down to smaller ones will always kind of, I think, outperform, at least for the time being. 
Um, and you know, what, what gets defined as a big job will continue to get bigger because um, the models should be able to handle more, but that's something important to keep in mind. Uh, minimal reasoning works well for code. Yeah, and again, like you can have minimal reasoning and then add some just like light chain of thought prompting, prompt engineering to kind of have a little bit of both. Tool preambles. So tool preambles are really cool. Um, it basically lets GPT-5 narrate what it's doing and why before executing a tool. Um, so it's very much so like a nice UX thing, um, giving users like visibility into the process. Claude has had this for a while. This is what it looks like. It's these like thinking blocks. Um, and so, G you know, these preambles let GPT-5 send these intermittent updates. Specifically, the model's trained to provide a plan up front and then send progress updates. And so if you use GPT-5 in Cursor, you've kind of seen this like planning process, I would say, and then the progress updates as well. Um, so you can just turn on, you know, in the reasoning um, block in your request, just turn on summary to be concise. You can have them auto or very detailed as well. And as the same thing with that, that we'll see across everything we talk about, you can reinforce these um, in your prompt. So you can say you have a little tool preamble section. Um, you can say, you know, rephrase the goal, give a structured plan, um, narrate each step. Here's what the output looks like. So we have a reasoning, you have the summary, we have the type, we have all the text, and then you have what would be like the final output, the message. Something important to note is that as OpenAI has done for a while, since all of its reasoning models, um, they have the reasoning behind some sort of gate. It seems like it's becoming more available, uh, but you will need to be a verified organization to be able to see those summaries, which is you know just a process you have to do with them. That's a little bit more intrusive than I thought, but it's uh, not. It's pretty straightforward. They also launched the verbosity parameter, which controls how long the final output is. It's not a hard cap like uh, Max tokens, and it only affects the model's answer, not the internal tools or, or reasoning. That's the reasoning effort and then verbosity is for the final. And so honestly, like they give guidance um, about which everyone, like each level means it's low, medium and high, um, but this is the type of thing you really need to test and it's really dependent on your use case. And again, as we mentioned before, verbosity can be enhanced or even overridden in your prompt. For example, um, you set a global verbosity level in the API, but then give task specific overrides in certain tools or contexts. So yeah, generally you're not gonna be messing around with the API, values as much as maybe you'd be messing around with the, the prompts for different use cases. And an example comes from a cursor. So when they initially upgraded to GPT-5, they noticed the models became very verbose in the conversation, which like in cursor, you don't want that, right? Like you just want to be able to work very quickly and have the, you know, the code changes be, be top notch. Um, but so the model was being very chatty um, and overly verbose, but the code generated was being was like very short. It was like one letter functions and stuff like that. Um, and some stuff that's just very terse and not readable. And so what they did was set the verbosity to low globally, and then added prompt instructions for, for, for having longer, more verbose outputs only when using the specific coding tools. So this meant, you know, faster um, conversations with the user and better code. And here's what that looked like. Write code for clarity, uh, make it readable. Don't use, yeah, don't produce cold cough. Use high verbosity for writing code and code tools. Honestly, you probably could have got 90% of the value with just that one line. Responses API, not chat completions. Um, I'd imagine most people have probably migrated over responses API, but there's a lot of other benefits. So I would just do that at this point. Um, but they know just like with that string change um, on their tool, you know, Tau Bench, which is all about tools, they jumped from 74 to 80, uh, 74 to 78. Frameworks and packages. Um, you know, it will work with most of them, but generally speaking, like if you were to start a new project, these are some of the ones that it will know best. They gave some prompt examples of self-reflection for coding projects, which I thought were kind of interesting, um, as well for matching code-based designs and we have that prompt in prompt up, you can go check it out. And then tuning old prompts to work well with GPT-5. So this is gonna be really important for anyone who's using anything else but GPT-5 before. Um, as mentioned before, GPT-5 can feel slower. It's naturally more introspective and proactive. So, you know, we have all these different levers we can pull on now to kind of mess with that, but that's something to be aware of. And so, for example, th Cursor used to have something in there, kind of, these are basically reasoning instructions of be thorough and gathering information, get the full picture, yada, yada. This worked well for older models, but not as much as GPT-5, because you don't need to have this type of instruction for GPT-5. Um, it just caused the model to do too much then, too much reasoning, too much tool use. Um, so Cursor basically removed that and softened the language and that worked a lot better. Yeah, as we talked about earlier, um, 
GPT-5 and 4.1 are similar in that they will follow instructions very closely. But you really need to make sure that your instructions aren't conflicting because that can throw the model down a really bad path. And since it's a reasoning model, unlike GPT-4.1, it can, it can just burn tons of uh, tokens trying to you know, make amends with two statements that are inherently against each other in your prompt that maybe you don't even realize. And this is actually a big problem that we see generally when we're helping teams with prompt engineering is that they don't even realize that their prompts contradict each other um, until they have someone like us, like a third party, kind of take a look. And so that's always like a pretty easy way to, um, you know, make sure your prompts are working well is to have someone else review them. And so moving forward, a couple other best practices as we wrap up. Um, the new minimal reasoning link level is something you probably should just need to test around with. Um, it's the fastest option, um, and it's really dependent on your use case. And so a couple other ones that also come from the 4.1 prompt engineering guide, um, is summarizing up front. If you're using that minimal, um, level of reasoning, have the model kind of briefly outline its thought process at the start, um, before it generates an answer. It's kind of like chain of thought, having good tool preambles, making sure the tools are distinct. So it doesn't have to reason about which one to do because your reasoning's you're using a lower reasoning in this case, persistent reminders to give model uh, an idea of where it's kind of at in the process. Um, and then a little bit more on you as a developer, since the model has lower reasoning. So important things to keep in mind. And lastly, Meta prompting, they released a cool little meta prompting prompt. You can try this out. It's super fun. Um, you should always use LLMs when you, when you are working on your prompts. And that is it. My dog has to go outside. But I hope this was helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. And we'll talk to you next time.